Hello planet people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor. I always forget to say that part. But anyways, if you're new around here, I make videos all about plants. I apply that science both indoors and out. So if you like the sounds of that, stay tuned because we're talking about neem today. So this was a request. I've been literally getting this request for like a year and a half now and I've been ignoring it even though I promise you guys all the time I don't ignore you. This one I've been ignoring, mostly because it is a cult favorite. People love Neem. I've got my issues with Neem, not Neem per se. We'll, we'll get into it. Anyways, we're gonna be looking at the science as to why your Neem stopped working, why it never worked, and why Canadians really can't actually access this stuff. So this video is actually mostly for Americans because Canadians just don't even try. Just don't try. It's, it's useless. It's futile, in my opinion. So what exactly is neem? Well, it is a pesticide. It is not really a pesticide, but they consider, the world of plants considers it a pesticide. It's not. It's a pest deterrent, kind of slightly maybe a pesticide. Anyways, it is from an evergreen that is grown in Sri Lanka. And uh, this evergreen has a name that I cannot pronounce to save my life as Ratatatitica indica. Yep, that's it. Anyways, this evergreen has nuts, it has big old balls, and these balls fall off of the tree and they are pressed, specifically cold pressed, in order to give us neem oil. This is the same way all of oil is made and various other types of oil for that matter. Now, the problem is, is that the market doesn't always give you a cold pressed neem oil. So my first disclaimer is if you are choosing to use neem oil in your plant system, both indoors or outside, you need to make sure it says cold pressed. There's gonna be a ton of verbiage on these packages. 100% pure, concentrated, I don't know, essential, just ignore all of it. All you care about is cold rest. The reason for this is because the active ingredient in the neem oil itself is only active and only not denatured, undenatured, if it is cold pressed. If it is processed any other way, the active ingredient that fights the pests are, it's gone. It's denatured, it doesn't exist. And this is the issue because there's a ton of products out there, most of which aren't done properly. I will leave an Amazon link down, before, but down below for those of you that can actually get this in your country with actual cold pressed neem in it, a product that will work. Just something to keep in mind. Now, when I talk about ya old Canadians out there, me included, Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada has not yet approved neem as a pesticide for sale in Canada. That means it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. You could be a homesteader, a horticulturist, a greenhouse, you name it, you're not getting your hands on neem. Specifically, you're not getting your hands on good quality neem. Now, you can get neem from Swadesh markets, my understanding is. This ultimately is not the same. It is not guaranteed to be cold pressed and it's not guaranteed to have the active ingredient. So yes, it may have you know, leaves or roots or sticks or twigs or whatever in it that is neem from the tree, but you specifically need the nuts to be cold pressed which you cannot get here in Canada. So because it has neem oil on it does not necessarily mean it's gonna work for you. So the active ingredient for neem is again, azradinachintin. It's the exact same as the actual name of the tree itself. That's the active ingredient that you do need present. So how does neem exactly work? Well, it has different mechanisms of working depending on the life stage your insect is at. So let's start with a insect that is an adult. So if we have an adult insect and we choose to use neem on our plants, we're gonna get into the methods of which you can apply this, but theoretically your plant has been sprayed or you have put it into the soil and it has been uptaken into the plant. So there's neem on your plant and you have the presence of adult thrips, uh, aphids, whatever the case is. These adults suck on the sap 
which is the xylem and the phloem of the plant. Now, when neem is applied, it smells like the active ingredient. And that active ingredient has a bit of a taste to it. And that taste actually is so disgusting to a majority of adult insects that they choose not to chew on said leaves. That means if you choose to use neem, regardless of what plant is infected, you need to treat the whole house because the adult pests, when they find out your philodendron, just tastes like garbage, they're just gonna move over to the syngonium that doesn't taste like garbage. It's as simple as that. So you need to treat the entire home or the entire area in which the pests are present in order to deter those adults from consuming any sap. That means if the adults aren't consuming, they are no longer laying and therefore we can end the life cycle. The second way in which neem takes out the predator is via the larvae, the nymph stage, um, an adolescent bug. And it actually is semi-poisonous. And I don't like to say poisonous because it doesn't really kill them immediately. Like there's a lot of pesticides out there such as insecticidal soaps and stuff hydrogen peroxide which we just recently talked about that will kill pests on content contact but neem's not going to all neem does is it builds up in the pest system and it stops the plant from fully developing is essentially all that happened or the sorry the pest from fully developing so we end up with stunted growth and ultimately leads to death this means if you use neem as your pesticide treatment regardless of application whether it be in the soil or physically on the plant itself you end up uh, with a very slow process. This can take weeks at time, which if you're in the throes of a very active issue, that's a long time. So I suggest if you are choosing to use neem, you use biologicals in combination with neem and neem as more so a preventative, but we'll get into why it's not the greatest preventative uh, right now. So when it comes to neem, we have a bit of a problem. Pests are smart. And I gotta do a whole video on this for you guys because I think that you would ultimately really enjoy it. And so what, um, when I say insects become resistant or insecticidal resistance is that insects over time will adapt. Wonderful little thing. Weeds do this too, actually. And so they will become used to whatever chemical is present that was affecting their life before. Unfortunately with neem, the, the learning curve for the insect really isn't that big it just has to learn to like the taste of the product it didn't like the taste of before so all it needs to do is decide ah screw it i'm hungry enough i'm going to eat this plant and therefore it's game over the adult is going to reproduce it's going to produce larvae and then the only hope is that your application somehow stunts or kills the larvae that do exist and grow and ultimately makes it so that they just don't want to continue any farther. So I personally have never used neem because you can't get good quality neem or the proper neem here in Canada. So I don't really know how well this stuff works. Um, in my opinion, there's better options out there. I've also heard it really stinks too. But anyways, that is kind of the, the science behind how it treats both adults, larvae, nymph, the whole life cycle and what it does to them. So let's get into what it does to the plant, the soil, and just the general application of the product. So the first method is foliar application, and this doesn't work the way that you may think it works. So when we think of foliar application of a pesticide such as neem, we are automatically thinking that it is going to coat the leaves in something that either kills or disrupts the plant or the pest. And that's not the case here with our house plants and both our outdoor plants and neem foliar application is actually done for the purpose of it being uptaken into the leaves which theoretically would work but we talked about foliar feeding before and we particularly specifically focused on the fact that foliar feeding only works if the molecule can actually get into the stomata of the plant through the guard cell. If it is unable to be absorbed through the stomata, it cannot be brought into said leaf. Now that active molecule in particular is too large for the absorption through the stomata. And we know this through scientific research that has been done on neem itself. That means it's not able to get into the leaf and therefore the xylem, the phloem, and the general sap of that plant, which is key here because the only way we can 
tell those adults that it's gross. The only way we can feed those sap sucking larvae and nymph is via the entry of neem into the plant system. That means if we spray it on the plant, we're solely relying on that bug, just not liking it on their toes until it rains and then it's game over. But foliar application is like the least viable of the two. So you're probably thinking, okay, soil, this is clearly it because it's gonna be uptaken into the plant. It's gonna be put into that xylem and phloem with the rest of the nutrients. And when the adults, the babies, decide to take a drink, game over. But you may be wrong. Systemic pesticide. That's what we're talking about here when we're talking about it getting in through the roots. So I could do a whole video on systemic pesticide. You gotta let me know in the comments down below if you want that. I will do that for you. Uh, but when it comes to systemic pesticides, we are using the soil as the mechanism for absorption. This means the neem is uptaken into the plant and it is essentially in the blood circulatory system of said plant for lack of better terms here. But what we end up with when it comes to neem is poor absorption in alkaline soils. And this means if your soil is above seven, you are going to have poor absorption. That is why you need to keep your soil on the lower side. The benefit to this though, is that if you're able to regulate your pH so that the neem is uptaken, then the nutrients is also being uptaken too, because uh, plants like it's slightly acidic in their soil. So you're, it's like a double header with this one. So if you do use neem as a systemic, systemic pesticide, you definitely wanna make sure that that soil pH is in check. Something to keep in mind with applying neem to soil or any pesticide to soil for that matter, is you need to look at the uh, kill ratio or the, the kill spectrum of that said pesticide. And so I did look up neem and what it can affect and it's, it's been studied uh, around 200 different microbes can be killed by neem, some of which are beneficial. So when it comes to the macro insects that are sapping, sucking sap out of your plants, neem is kind of effective, uh, really effective if you've never used it before and your pests have never had the opportunity to get used to it. But if you're using neem in the soil, you do run the risk of some of your microbes being harmed. And these are the beneficial ones. Now, if it is a do or die situation, of course, go crazy. Do what you need to do to save said plant. But if this is as a preventative measure or you're using it as um, a maintenance type feature, do it. It's completely fine, but with caution. So your applications should be spread out adequately to ensure that the microbes have time to bounce back. And what I mean by that is once a month, you need 72 hours for your microbes to repopulate the area. My only warning is in a closed system. I personally haven't studied this. No one, I shouldn't say, no one's studied this before. We've only studied this as soil scientists in the field on the spectrum of the earth and uh, how conventional fertilizers, you know, heat, things like that will affect microbe colonies, the volume of microbes in those colonies, and how long it takes for those colonies to reestablish after they've been affected by something. And when it's connected to the earth, it's connected to the rhizosphere of mother earth, we can replenish those microbe colonies right back to where they used to be within 24 to 72 hours. When we're talking about closed systems though, such as you know potted plants like I have behind me or container gardens, we do have a slippery slope where we could sterilize it beyond the point of repair only because we don't have connection to the earth and the bank reserve of microbes. So if you do use neem, then I suggest top dressing with a product um, such as Mother's Earth, um, not sponsored, but um, Mother's Earth fertilizer or um, just a manure, a compost, something that is biologically active back into your potting soil. And this could be through just the form of top dressing. It doesn't have to be complicated by any means, but you still want to do that just so you do have that microbial um, benefit there for both pest regulation, fungal, uh, bacterial, physical pests, and then also nutrient cycling as well. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about me. I hope it was worth the wait. I know this is a controversial topic. That's kind of why I steered away from it. People are either, you're either in love with this stuff or you absolutely hate it. So, and I mean, it is what it is from what I read online. I can't, I can't use it. So unfortunately it's a, it's a Canadian thing. So, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Let me know if you've noticed that your name does or does not work. I would actually love to know what's up there and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.